Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Hello. Hi. Uh, very quickly, um, I'm not on my laptop here unless it is to do a video or to address something online or something like that. Um, I wanted to get away from using my cell phone, but uh, I get lots of emails and they come in through my cell phone. Okay, I get them on my cell phone. So very, very quickly, um, I have a very limited number of people who I Skype with, but I am not on my laptop enough to necessitate time to be on Skype, see. So email me, okay? And about the emails, like I said, I, I for as few uh, people who are subscribed to my Nothing Little channel, I get a lot of emails. So uh, be patient, please. Be patient with your servant, okay? For as, as little of a nothing that I am here on YouTube and what, I, and that I am a servant to you, uh, Church of the Living God. Uh, for the nothing that I am, sure get a lot of emails. <laughs> but please, you know, if there's if you want to get a hold of me, like I said, Skype is I don't do Skype that much. Okay, I don't. If you want to Skype with me, okay, send me an email. Hey Brad. Can you Skype with me? Yada, yada, yada. Then we go from there. But otherwise, send me emails, okay? Okay? Of course, I will. Of course I'm not ignoring you, brother. Of course not. I'm just not on my uh, laptop enough for, the, uh, for Skype. I'll do the stuff I got to do here. And then, it, you know, upload the video. Shut it off. Okay? <laughs> so, email me. But, okay, now that, now that, with that out of the way, okay, um, I was recommended by a brother to watch a certain documentary, which I'm going to link in the description box of this video. It was, it's called The Wrath of Jody. Um, and to warn you, it is for adults. Fortunately, there is some foul language in it, but watching it shows you the mind, the mentality, and the tactics of those who are sociopathic narcissists. Um, very, very interesting. My wife and I actually sat down. It's over two hours. My wife and I sat down and actually watched this video that a brother of ours recommended. And um, the lady in this, this Jody, um, she, she done crazy. But as my brother said, the manipulation, the narcissism, and the sociopathic tendencies of this delusional, deluded young woman, you would almost think her to be a Jesuit. But then, no, she, she ain't no Jesuit. She's just devil-possessed, okay? Just devil-possessed. We do have to remember that sometimes, brethren. But there again, remember, the Jesuit serves who? Their father, the devil, Satan. Okay? That we do have to remember. So it is no quinky dink that someone who is not of the Jesuits is displaying the same tactics and same um, um, kind of persona that a Jesuit coadjutor infiltrator will um uh, shoe as well, you know, because they are both, they both serve their father, Satan, okay? But with that, turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to, Saul, to Proverbs chapter 5. Proverbs chapter 5. We will be reading verses 3 on the verse 14 in Proverbs chapter 5. Proverbs chapter 5. In your authorized version of the scriptures. Follow me along. 
For the lips of a strange woman drop as an honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. Now, for our instruction in righteousness, you know, you read uh, Proverbs chapter 7, uh, you could easily tie into that speaking about uh, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism, the mother church, okay? Okay? For our instruction in righteousness, okay? Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots, Roman Catholicism, okay? Roman Catholicism even likens itself onto a woman. Semiramis, you know, the wife of Nimrod, okay? Keep that in mind. For the lips of a strange woman drop as in honeycomb. Her mouth is smoother than oil, like a lot of devils are. They speak smooth things. They itch your ears. They tickle you, right? Say things you want to hear. But her end is bitter as wormwood, as sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life, her ways are movable that thou canst not know them. Movable, slithering like a snake, a serpent. And when you watch, if you watch this video, this documentary that I will be linking in the description box, you will see this woman change her strategy on how to fit the, um, the interrogator. Okay, now put that in perspective onto the Jesuit and the infiltrator. They will move, they will change their narrative in order to fit in. Okay, her ways are movable, not firm, not firm in themselves. They are firm in themselves in the meaning that they serve Satan. Okay but they are always moving, always moving, always changing, always changing. Either one, to avoid detection, number two, to worm themselves in. Like I said, you watch, if you watch this uh, documentary that I will be linking in the description box, you'll see this, this woman try to manipulate and try to and put on facade after facade. And when she sees that it's not working, her ways are movable. Just like these coadjutors who infiltrate. They try, they'll go until they're known or until they get too much heat. They'll draw back and then come in with a new strategy to worm their way in. See? See? Very interesting. And thank you to the brother that recommended that. Verse 7, Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house. The door of her house. Oh, maybe the Roman Catholic Church. Stay away from Roman Catholicism. Lest thou give thine honors unto other, other unless Thou give thine honor unto others, and thy years unto the cruel. Lest strangers be filled with thy wealth, and thy labors be in the house of a stranger. Think about verse 10, okay? I, to give you an example, I personally think, on a scale from 1 to 10, I think about... Seven, on a scale from one to ten, I say seven are enemies who are subscribed to this channel and watch me. Whereas three are actually of the Church of the Living God. Let me put it a different way. I personally believe that 70% of the people who click on these videos, who subscribe to the channel here, I believe personally that 70% of them are our enemies. 
while 30% are of the Church of the Living God. I actually do truly believe that. And why is that? Let strangers be filled with thy wealth. You know, enemies can watch videos done by the brethren and can imitate them, copy them, learn of them on how to sound as if they are of the Church of the Living God. See, they study, but not to shoot themselves on the prove, uh, approved on the God. No, no. They study for the means of deception. That they could put on facade, facade, facade. Always moving, changeable. Always changeable. And that's something. And that's something. And thy labors be in the house of a stranger. Oh, you know, I guess one should be flattered that devils download all your videos, I guess. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. They take what the Lord gives and they look at that, not that they may adhere themselves onto the scriptures, but how they may better be better to infiltrate and make themselves look as if they are. When they are not. Very interesting. Very interesting. Verse 11. And thou mourn at the last. When thy flesh and thy body are consumed. <laughs> and say. How have I hated instruction. And my heart despised reproof. And have not obeyed the voice of my teachers. Nor inclined mine ear. To them that instructed me. I was almost in all evil in the midst of the congregation and assembly. Almost. The warning is if you keep going down that path and playing to their ends, you know, appeasing them, uh, how do you do that? By fighting back. <laughs> Confessing a fault, which I have done which I have done, and I confess a fault. Um, I would like to tell you that I don't get irritated, but I do. I do. Um, sometimes at these devils, I get downright furious. I do. I do. And brethren, these things ought not to be so. Because one of the things that I have opposed onto you and I oppose to you again. You know how it saith in the scriptures that don't rejoice when your enemy falls, lest the Lord see it and he turn away his wrath from him. And I was thinking about that the other day. And I mentioned this to my brother. What would, how would I react to find out that my <laughs> dear friend over in England were to meet his demise? How would I react? How would I react? Knowing, knowing where such a one is going unless true scriptural brokenness and contrition come and true salvation is given. Unless that happen, such a one going down to hell. How would I react? How would you react? And see... Devils such as that, and as this young lady that you're going to see if you watch this uh, video that I put in the description box, changing to fit, always changing, always changing, always changing. How would you react? How would I react? How would you react if your enemy were to perish?
and go to hell. God is a just God, and his judgments are right, true, fair, and equal. Yes, you know, praise the Lord for your righteous judgment. But there again, are you judging yourself according to the scriptures? Oh boy. And see here, and here's the here's the flip side. Here's the flip side. Okay? If Brother Brian Denlinger, something were to happen to him, these devils would rejoice and be so happy that he were gone, that something foul happened onto him. They would rejoice and be happy and throw a party. I know for a fact if, if something happened to me, some of these devils would also rejoice and be happy. You would. You know you would. And, you know, brethren, search, let's search ourselves on this. This is a challenge to you, the church of the living God. The, the end of these devils is what? Hell. Unless they are broken and have contrition and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And in that brokenness, they will call and may the Lord save them. But see, when you remove scriptural repentance and change it, to mean something that it is not. They save themselves by their own belief. Hence, a religion of flesh. How would you react to such, to such news, brethren? How would I react? And, you know, I, 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 I give thought to that. It's like, you know, how would I react? Would I, would I, how? How? How would you? How would you? How would you? Would you be as they would, who would rejoice at you, brother, sister, falling? We're supposed to be different, right? How would you react? How would I? You know, going on 13 years, I would like to categorically say I would be weeping. But I know that in me, that is, in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. What would we do? Go to Proverbs chapter 24 now. Proverbs chapter 24. Proverbs chapter 24. <laughs> Let's read verses 15 under verse 22 in Proverbs chapter 24. Lay not wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous. Spoil not his resting place. For a just man falleth seven times, and riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. lest the Lord see it, and it displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. You know, in the book of Ezekiel, he plainly says, he has no joy in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked will come to repentance. You know, 
brokenness and contrition, godly sorrow. Uh, unlike what Calvin taught, God would have all men to come to repentance. All men. Now, just the elect like Calvin taught. No, no, no. No. <laughs> Verse 17 and 18 again. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth. And let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth, lest the Lord see it and it displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. How would you react? How would you react to verse 17 and 18 when put on the spot, dear brother, sister? How would I? How would I? Verse 19. Fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be thou envious at the wicked. Envious at the wicked. They have far less troubles than those who are not defiled by the king's meat. That was supposed to come today, but that's probably going to come tomorrow. Never mind. Okay? Wicked men who, who go along with the system. Who don't take stands according to the scriptures. Whose ways are movable. They're not plagued as other men. Those who stand for righteousness who seek to adhere their lives to the scriptures. Fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be, en be thou envious at the wicked. Envious, why? Because they don't have the problems that we do. Who stand upon the scriptures, who want our lives to resemble the scriptures. Who say, Lord, no matter what it costs me, I'm going to live my life according to this book. No matter what it costs me. Have you counted that cost, dear brother, sister? Then you see the wicked getting by quite easily, it seems. Verse 20. For there shall be no reward to the evil man. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. Their best life is now. Their best life is now. And look at verse 20, or verse 21. My son, fear thou the Lord and the King, one and the same. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And meddle not with them that are given to change. For their calamity shall rise suddenly. And who knoweth the ruin of them both? Now we who are saved, born again, converted of the, ch of the church of the living God, the ground and pillar of the truth. The Lord comes in and changes our lives. Not at gunpoint. Okay? Not at gunpoint. It's like, don't do that. You mess with that again, it won't hurt you. Okay? So don't touch that. Don't eat that. Quit looking at that. Don't listen to that. See that guy who you were talking to? Or I'd call your friend. Get away from him. Okay? Oh, you're not going to listen to me. Really? Okay? It's a little chastisement. It's a little chastisement. Oh, you're going to continue to eat that bad food? Huh? It's a little stomach ache for you. See? Because our Lord doesn't want robots, unlike what Mr. Calvin taught. Okay? He wants us to choose according to his will. And the change here, in verse 21, is not talking about the change that the Lord does. It's talking about those whose ways are movable that thou canst not know them. 
That's the change that's being referenced. How do you know? Keep reading in verse 22. For their calamity, their calamity shall rise suddenly. Again, watch this video. Um, granted, okay, there's, there's some pretty horrid things in it, but watch it to see how her ways are movable. How these devils will put on facade after facade. A facade is a false front. Okay, how they will change themselves to fit the situation. Okay. Oh, are you are you saying something about Paul in First Corinthians? We'll get to that. Oh, we'll get to that, you. We'll get to that. First, go to James now. Go to James, chapter one. How many of you have the guts within the Lord who have? Faith on the Lord to ask the hard questions about yourself. Examine yourselves. Prove your own selves. Hmm? See, a very good thing is to deflect instead of looking inward. You know, the pointing... How many are pointing back at you? Hmm? Oh, it's easy to do that, isn't it? Hi! Yeah? Yeah? But see, this young woman in this video, the coadjutor devils out there, nothing touches them because they're a walking razor blade. You know, life throws a lemon at them, they make lemonade and throw it back at them. Instead of tasting that bitterness to hope that it'll pass through and make them better on the, uh, in the end. No, they don't do that. They don't do that. Because the whole world revolves around them. Hence, narcissism. Sociopathic. Quite frankly, insanity. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Oh, let's read verses 2 and verse 8. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Oh. Her ways are always movable. Her ways are movable, but thou canst not know them. Let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Unstable in all his ways. Their hearts are fixed, oh yeah, amen, on themselves, but not on the Lord. Are our hearts fixed on the Lord? <laughs> Better be. Better be. Hmm. Now, some of you might be thinking about, well, what about Paul? Paul changed his stuff in order to win the lost, right? Now, those of you of the Church of the Living God, and even you devils know this, but we're going to cover this, okay? Even you devils know this. People will say, well, Paul, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Paul, he became this so he could win this. He did this so he could do this. Yeah, okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Uh, 
All right. Beginning at verse 16. On to verse 22. Verse 16 on the verse. No, verse 23. Okay. Verse 16 on the verse 23. Okay. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me. What is my reward then? Verily, that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. Made myself servant unto all, meaning that Paul would go to whomever to preach the gospel of Christ. I'll give you an example out there, going up to a group of gangbangers. Just walk up to them. Oh, Lord, I hope everything, uh, may you can get me out of here so that you may, you know. And they end up taking tracks. Hmm? Do you have reservation on going places outside your door or even here online as to preach the gospel? Or do you have only a select place that you will go to? Verse 19, For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servant unto all that I might gain the sum, gain the more. How many of you out there are willing to go, seriously go, to where the homeless are? You know, behind grocery stores in the, will, in the woods, by garbage dumps, on the sides of booze stores. by the dumpsters of a McDonald's. In the back, in an abandoned car by a laundromat. Are you willing to go to them? Or do you have this, uh... Willing to go up to a bunch of kids playing basketball with that Grotesque rap music going on. Well, hey, can can I give any of you guys these tracks? And you know, is it always successful? No, <laughs> no. But are you willing to do that? Are you willing to do that? What if the Lord wants you to do that? Hmm? Lord, is this what you want me to... Okay! <laughs> See? Are you willing to be a servant unto all? Servant unto all, meaning what? Verse 20. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might, that I might gain the Jews. Paul was Jewish, of course. But he went to the Jew first and also to the Greek. A Greek is a Gentile, okay? And to them that are under the law, as, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law, okay? Meaning those who kept the law while he was set free from the law that he might serve Christ, okay? Doesn't mean that he did that in order to get in. No. It means that he went to these people. To them that are without law, as without law, 
be not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, who has set us free from the law of Moses, that we may follow Christ. This is not saying that Paul became as the world to win the world. We'll, we'll, we'll prove that to you here really quick. That I might gain them that are without law. To the weak became I as weak. You know, going on to the homeless doesn't mean you become homeless to witness on to the homeless. Okay? It doesn't mean that you are unstable. That your ways are always movable. Meaning that you change in order to fit. No. 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 It means that you follow our Lord's lead to go where he will have you to go without fear onto places that you wouldn't even dream of. Or do you have your own preconceived notions about what that is, huh? But think about that. To the weak became I as weak that I might gain the weak. I am made... Aha! I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. I am made all things. Look at verse 19. Yet have I made myself servant unto all, that I might gain the more. I am made all things to all men. See, Paul resolved in, in himself. Lord, no matter where you're going to send me, to whom you send me, I'm going to preach the gospel as you would have me to preach it, to whomever it will be. Whether it be unto gangbangers, whether it be unto kids, children, whether it be unto homeless people, whether it be to executive types in a Suits and ties, okay? Whether it be to tough guys getting face masks, okay? <laughs> All right? Whether it be Jewish people in the synagogues, okay? Whether it be to a Catholic. Paul, he said right here, verse 19, I made myself servant to all that I might gain the more. But he said, see in verse 19, for though I be free from all men, free from all men, it means he didn't, you don't change what the Lord has made you in him to go and witness unto the lost. No, that's the whole point. That these people could see the Lord what he has done in you. <laughs> Not that you're condescending to change what the Lord will have you to be to fit in. See, that's what these hireling people in the church buildings teach. Be like the world to win the world. Well, I'm so sorry. No, no, no. Verse 23. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. Who does the saving? Is it your wit? No, it's the Lord. But see, you do not change who you are in Christ to go witnessing. You seek not honor from men, dear brethren. <laughs> because now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verses 9 on to verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 9 and verse 10. For I am the least of the apostles, that am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the 
church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. I, by the grace of God, I am what I am. First Timothy chapter 1. Uh -huh. First Timothy chapter 1, verses 11 on to verse 16. First Timothy chapter 1, verses 11 on to verse 16. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust, and I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious. But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause, I obtained mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might chew forth all long suffering, for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Verse 17. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Back to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. <clears throat> Verse 9. For I am the least of the apostles, that I'm not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am. And this grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. For by grace are you saved through faith. And then when the Lord saves you, you are sealed with the Holy Ghost. And the Lord is that spirit. I am crucified on the world. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth within me. Christ liveth within you. Christ liveth within you. And he is the one that is to be made manifest when he sends you out to whomever it will be. You don't change to fit the circumstance. You are who you are in Christ. In that circumstance, so those to whom he sends you to will see. Because we are his emissaries. See, again, that video with that lady, you, if, you can, if you can watch it, it's pretty, wow, you'll see. You'll see that slithering mentality. Slithering mentality like these people, the Jesuits. I've read this before. Okay, I do recommend, if you can, to get this book. This guy right here, James Epkin Wiley. Okay, he wrote a book on the history of Protestantism, which is a very expensive uh, book collection to get. But um, I'm going to read something to you. Okay. Going to read something to you of the Jesuit character, okay? Which you will see in this woman, but she was not a Jesuit. But you got to remember that that young lady, as is the Jesuit, they serve one master, the devil, Satan. Okay. And about the Jesuit, I've covered this before, but I'm 
going to cover it again for the sake of this video. They must acquire a knowledge of all trades and handicrafts. They must study sciences and arts. They must speak all languages. We do not mean that this vast range of accomplishments and capability was exacted on the part of each individual Jesuit, but only on the part of the order. It must be in itself an epitome of society. The order must be able to send forth men for all departments of life, for the plow, for the loom, for the factory, for the borse, for the school, for the bench of justice, for the army, and for the church. See, one of the biggest misconceptions about the Jesuits is that they only mess with the big dogs, that they don't bother with the little fish. No, 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 no. Its members must wear an infinity of shapes. Ways are movable that thou canst not know them. Yeah. Meddle not with those who are given to change. An unstable man. Uh, uh, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Uh -huh. Play an infinite, an infinity of parts. And disperse themselves so widely among professional pursuits as to make it impossible to be believed that they were all moving on one point and all obeying one head. Get a load of that. And it just dawned on me, okay? Beg your pardon, okay? This is on page 19, okay? We read this where my finger is, in, is down, okay? Go ahead, pause that and read that. We already read that, okay? Where my finger is in, and down. And this is what we are going to be reading to finish this up. Okay, let me see. Okay, there. Can you see that? This right here. Pause it and read it. Okay. Some were to counsel kings. Others were to guide the conscious consciences of ministers of states of state. Others to lead armies, others to declaim in parliaments, and others to harnage at country fairs. They were to preach all theologies, Lutheranism, Calvinism, like Jesuit James White, like Freemason John MacArthur and his little pet boy toy, Justin Peters. My wife the other day said, that guy just gives me the creeps. <laughs> Arminianism, Anabaptism. They were to be Mohammedan, dervishes, Indian fakers, and Chinese pundits. By these counterfeits, they would open their way into all circles and into all countries and be able to mold and guide opinion. And yet the quarter from which the inspiration came should not be known. <laughs> Ways are movable that thou canst not know them. Hello? Their mission on which all their efforts were made to concentrate, was to quench the liberties of the new age, corrupt the churches of the reformed faith, which they have long done, undermine the thrones of disobedient kings, convulse non-Catholic nations and sort to break down the world and having broken it down to build it up again and assume the government of it. The end justifies the means to rule the world by the volition of a single man. And also too, also too, going to be reading just this paragraph and then we'll be done. 
right here, the yellow part where my fingers are in this bracket, okay? Where is it? Yeah. Where my fingers are, okay? Hopefully you see that. Pause that and read it. That, the yellow bracket, which you just looked at. On page 86, this is the book by those guys. Can you see that? Come on. Can you see that? Okay. But it has again urged, to what practical end forbid the omission of the Jesuits? You may as well try to shut out the winds <laughs> or frame an edict against the entrance of evil spirits. We grant that the Jesuit can pass whenever it suits him. Whenever it suits him. Remember that when watching this video that I'm going to link. Okay. Into another shape. And become as viewless as the winds. Or as the spirit whose step no one hears. And whose form eludes every eye. Ha! Get, get a lot of that one. You banish him in his character of priest today. <laughs> he returns tomorrow in the guise of a peddler or of a shoemaker. Or it may be of a foreign scholar or count. Yeah. And again, with the devil coadjutors that many of us of the Church of the Living God may or may not have encountered, uh, yeah. Stay around for a little while. When things get too hot, they pull back and then come back in and as another guys. That's what devils do. That's what devils do. That is not what the Church of the Living God is to do. We do not change in order to fit in. We do not change the truth of the gospel and become like the world to win the world. That's... Hey, devils, come on. Have a little, have a little backbone and at least admit that's what the church building system does. Okay? Can you at least do that? Yes. That's what the church building system does. They want to be as the world to win the world. Come on. Come on. Admit that at least. Okay? <laughs> but see, Jesuits do what this lady, this young lady does. And that young lady ain't no Jesuit. But see, it's the same spirit. It's the same spirit. And again, uh, now hold on, I, um, I'm going to pause this because I want to find this. Hold on, hold on. Okay, thank you. In, in closing this video, brethren, Church of the Living God, let us all, hi, remember this admonition of this video. Devils are unstable. They put on false fronts while hiding who they really are. But then again, after a while, they, they, who they really are come out. If you were to meet me in person, spirit, soul, and body, you know, if you and I were to meet in person, who you are looking at and who you observe and who you hear on this and uh, when you're watching this, is the same one that you're going to meet out there walking on the streets. The same one you're going to meet and know of when you're in my house eating a, a, a zucchini pie with us, okay? What you see here is what you're going to get, okay? Because by the grace of God, I am what I am. A sinner who is chief, okay? 
But for that end, I obtained mercy. Mercy. Okay? And about mercy, because mercy rejoiceth against judgment. I'm going to put another video, um, He Delighteth in Mercy, in this video as well. Okay? Okay, I'm going to put that video in there as well, if I can remember. Let us remember in Proverbs chapter 24, this admonition. Verse 17 and 18. And let us really think about this, brethren. Unto you, my young friend, who's being kept down. And those of you also, brethren, sisters, remember this. Hi, remember this. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. Lest the Lord see it, and it displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. And before, you know, like I said to a brother the other day, I seriously, in going on 13 years, saved of the Lord. In that 13 years, I have truly only known of one man who could honestly say, who could honestly be as David, who mourned for his enemy, who wept for them as his own mother's son. Remember the heart of David, a man after God's own heart? While his enemies rejoiced at his uh, mess-ups, when they were in trouble, he mourned for them. He wept for them. How do we do when God's judgment is upon these wicked devils? Yes, praise the Lord for his judgment. Yes, praise the Lord for his judgment. Yes. Keeping in mind, brethren, these devils will rejoice and be glad and send, send each other gifts when you are taken out of the way. Remember that. Aren't we to be different? And also, go to Job chapter 31. Go to Job 31. Verses 27. On to verse 30. Oh, this one, this one, this one stings me. This ought to sting you, brother and sister. And for you devils, this you, you're you're kind of excluded from this <laughs> because you would rejoice, you would rejoice at Brother Brian that it came out that something awful had happened to him. You would rejoice at it. You would rejoice, you devils, some of you, if you found out something happened to me. You would. You would. And all your lies and all your fake little humility, your facades, come on. You know you would. I know you would. You know you would. The Lord knows you would. And so does your father, the devil. But brethren, church of the living God, check this out. A little instruction in righteousness, no, don't hurt nobody. Job 31, verses 27 on to verse 30. Oh, this is going to hurt you. And my heart hath been secretly... Wait, 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 wait. Let's read 28. Excuse me, that doesn't fit. <laughs> okay. This also were an iniquity to be punished by the judge. For I should have denied the God that is above. If I rejoiced at the destruction of him that hated me or lifted up myself when evil found him. 
Neither have I suffered my mouth to sin by wishing a curse to his soul. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. 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 And see these devils. They do exactly that. They will rejoice at any one of your destruction. They will rejoice at the destruction of Brian Denlinger. They will rejoice at my destruction. They will rejoice at your destruction. And they wish curses upon your soul. <laughs> Read, read uh, the canons and decrees of the Council of Trent with all the anathemas. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what does Job say here? Verses 29 and verse 30. If I rejoiced at the destruction of him that hated me or lifted up myself when evil found him, neither have I suffered my mouth to call to... Neither have I suffered my mouth to sin by wishing a curse to his soul. How do we do it that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, see, I, I'm honest. I'm honest. Yeah, I've, I've failed at that. Yeah, I have. I've failed at that. And see, that's what they want of you, brethren. And for those of us who know that, when we give ourselves over to go down to play their game, shame on us. Hi. So, um, chew on these things a little, brethren. Chew on these things. Ponder them. And of course, examine yourselves in the light of Scripture. How does your life line up with the Scriptures? Because you know he delights in mercy, right? Like I said, check out that video, the video that I'm going to be linking in the description box. And um, observe... And remember what I showed you about the Jesuits. And this lady, she ain't no Jesuit. But it's the same spirit, see. So, anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Um, today is Thursday. Today is Thursday, the 15th. Yeah, today is Thursday. Um, there'll be a video tomorrow, Lord willing, tomorrow. A video, Lord willing, Saturday. Um, and... Maybe, uh, Lord willing, a video Sunday. One, one a day kind of thing. One at a time. So, thank you so much for watching if you do. And thank you to all of you, Church of the Living God. Uh, we love you and we pray for so many of you. Thank you so much for watching if you do.